so people can watch it later. And then uh, we want to welcome uh, Tess McGivern. Uh, she is, I want to make sure I got your title right, but Operations Manager at Navigate. Navigate is based up in Chicago, and I'm going to have her talk about what she does and what Navigates, what Navigates does. Um, but I met Tess um, a couple of years ago. We took the Sport Management Club. Um, Alyssa's not on here, but she was at that at that event. But we took the Sport Management Club down to Indianapolis um, to an event that was put on by UND in kind of conjunction with the Pacers there at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. Uh, Tess showed us around, and um, she was a graduate of the UND Sports Management Program. So, uh, Tess, I'll just kind of have start with this. Tell us about your background and how you got to navigate. Yeah, so thanks for the introduction and nice to meet all of you. Um, I just kind of talked a little bit about my experience getting into undergrad, um, but once I got to University of Illinois, um, I quickly learned that it was super important to make really good use of those four years in terms of internships, clubs, just like what you guys are doing, um, and you know, doing making the most of your classes too. Um, I, my first summer between freshman and sophomore year, I actually was an intern for customer service at the Texas Rangers. Um, and that was kind of like being thrown in head first because as most of you know, like obviously baseball is like the longest season. It's really long days, it's really long games. Um, and I got there in May. So it was like right when the season was really getting ramped up and then I obviously to go back to school I didn't stay through postseason but um, lots of long hours really really fun really exciting um, the Rangers as lucky enough their offices are at the ballpark not every team is like that I think most of them are getting to that um, but at the time you know there were lots of teams that were like that so it was really fun to be at the ballpark every single day um, you know, and just work for the very first time in that like super highly professional setting. You know, I had jobs in high school, but nothing like that, you know, waitress at the pizza place, lifeguard, stuff like that. Um, and so that really kind of like lit the fire, like, okay, this is like an industry where you kind of got to go and grab it for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and then the summer between sophomore and their freshman and sophomore year, I, I did go back home for the second half of the summer um, and just was a manager at the pool. Um, but that's because the first half of the summer I was studying abroad in New Zealand, which was another incredible experience. If you work in sports, um, there's a really high likelihood that you um, will travel. And even if you aren't the one traveling, um, you'll be part of you know planning and coordinating things like events and travel. Um, so obviously there was coursework tied to that, but it was just another really good experience of seeing how, you know, kind of a long, basically one big long event kind of works and how, you know, working together with having the whole group together at the same time, um, and accomplishing those objectives along the way and how that works. Um, and then the last, uh, my junior year, Right at the beginning of the second semester, I got a job for the University of Illinois athletic department in the camps and clinics department. Um, so basically running all of their youth camps, almost every, I've never heard of an athletic department that doesn't do extensive summer camp programs, yep. um, obviously not during COVID, I'm sure, but, um, and then academic year camps as well. And I would say that was another big turning point for me because it, you know, it wasn't my first experience in that setting, but it was my first experience kind of in, um, I was kind of an island, so I had a lot of things to do on my own, um, had to be a self-starter, had to work without a ton of guidance, and had to work, you know, e each head coach plans their own um, camp. So on the on my first day of work, I was in a meeting with Illinois's, well, my, my boss, the director of camps, and then Illinois' head basketball coach at the time. So you know, just learning how to really present yourself and speak and just communicate in ways, you know, I felt like I was being like a real adult for the first time um, in that internship. And I was lucky enough to work there um, that whole semester through the summer and then my whole senior year until I left for my first full-time job. My first full-time job out of college was at the University of Colorado and I was the internal event coordinator at the athletic department. So that was basically planning any events that had to do with the student athletes. So banquets, 
fundraisers in the summer, there was always a golf tournament and, you know, there's just several annual events. I'm sure you guys know um, from being in the sports world that athletic departments do um, mm -hmm. annually. So coordinating all of those. And then also football game day was part of my responsibility. So I was at all of those. And then another aspect was helping out with any other ticketed events. So women's basketball, men's basketball, and women's volleyball and women's soccer, I believe were the only ones with um, tickets at the time, um, but just helping out with those as needed. And that was another um, experience where, you know, it's lots of hours. It's, um, it's really fun. Um, I've learned that people that work in sports are generally really fun because obviously, you know, you, you're, you're helping other people have fun. But I remember um, a moment where we were the night before a football, a home football game. Um, we were setting up the rooftop or something and it was a Friday night and about, I don't know, a half mile away, we could see like Boulder High School having a football game. So that was kind of like a realization of like, whoa, I'm, I'm the one that's working while other people are during their leisure time. Yeah. Um, so that's another choice that is, you know, one that we make when we, when we dive into the sports world, but because you're helping other people have fun, you're working while other people are, you know, going to a game, going out, whatever it may be. Um, obviously it's worth it. <laughs> it's super fun. And, um, some of my best memories are like kind of those after hours times with your coworkers where, you know, you get to know each other really well, you're working together as a team. Um, I'm still really good friends with everyone I worked with at Colorado. They all came to my wedding. Um, just, just great times there. I, I had planned, I'm originally from Illinois, um, small town. And when I was about halfway through undergrad, I, I had plans to, I wanted to move far away, like for my first job, because I'm really close with my family. And I knew that I wanted to end up back in Illinois close by. Um, but I knew I also wanted to go and see other places and live other places first. So um, I didn't necessarily know that it would be Colorado. But I once I got there, I knew that it wouldn't be forever. And that my next in my next step, I wanted to um, get my master's degree. So I would say a year into living in Colorado, I started researching different sports management master's programs and eventually narrowed it down to Northwestern and um, University of Indianapolis. And I ended up going with UND because um, while obviously Northwestern is a great school, um, UND's curriculum actually, this, when I was there at least, um, not only was it hybrid, so you're not in class every day, um, I think we had each class we were there in person twice a month. So oh, it was good. It would be super manageable to do with working in sports. You know, I would, there were probably five or six times over the course of the two years where I had to miss a game, a Pacers game for an exam or a presentation or vice versa. I had to miss class for Pacers game, but mm -hmm. You know, this, the faculty was awesome about that. And then going into my job at the Pacers, I was completely up front. Hey, I'm getting this master's degree. Um, and they were, they were really cool with that too. So um, I picked UND because of that hybrid and because the second half of the curriculum was all MBA courses. Mm -hmm. And in my undergrad, there really wasn't any, any business classes. There were, you know, lots of things in relation to sports and entertainment, but I didn't have any finance. I didn't have accounting, anything like that. And after being at Colorado and, you know, talking to some of my colleagues who had climbed the ladder, even though, you know, you know, we're not, you know, being accountants or being, you know, particularly the person running all of those things, I realized that no matter what area you're in, you absolutely have to have an understanding of how those things work because sports are a business. And with this day and age, especially, that's how they run. Um, and so that was my major draw to UND. And um, I loved going to school there. Um, it was a small cohort, which was really different from my experience at Illinois, um, which I loved. I got to know my classmates really well. And once I moved there, that's when I, got my job with the Pacers. 
And then at the Pacers, I was the group service coordinator. So like, you know, Brandon and I planned events for the group sales team. And that was anything from having a college group come in um, to having a, a group of Boy Scouts come and do the color guard and, you know, hold up the American flag, uh, halftime shows, all that, all different types of things, basically a bunch of tiny events with, within one big event, which was, you know, a Pacers game. Um, again, very, very fun. Love all my coworkers from there too. Um, I was just texting with a couple of them yesterday. Um, obviously their world has changed a lot with COVID, but um, I just, I really, really value my time there. It was another time where I feel like I kind of was elevated into a position of leadership. And um, my first year there, um, we started two events that before COVID then became annual events and we did every year, one of which was the Pacers 5K and the other one was STEM Fest. Um, and those were such invaluable experiences to start from scratch, mm -hmm. you know, work with you know, C-suite level executives and be in those meetings, um, be in those brainstorms and kind of be the one running the show. Um, I think I definitely matured a lot while I was at the Pacers, not only through getting my master's, but because of the position I was in and um, the people I was working with. Um, as I was wrapping up my master's, so now we're in like spring of 2019. Um, well, I guess like, New Year's Eve going into 2019, I was back up in Chicago. Um, that's where at the time, my then fiance, he's from Chicago, now we're married. Um, and we were at a New Year's Eve party with a bunch of our friends. And I was talking to one of my friends who I had the same major with at U of I, Matt Zajac. And I was saying how Billy and I are, you know, we're both about done with our masters. This summer, we're probably gonna start looking at moving back to Chicago. Um, he was like, oh my God, you need to apply at Navigate. We have a couple of positions that are opening up soon. And I knew that Zajac worked at Navigate. Um, I didn't really know much about it, but I knew that he loved working there. So um, that's how I kind of heard about Navigate over the course of the spring. Um, we stayed in touch. I visited a few times to meet with some of his friends. And then as soon as that job opened up, um, I interviewed and the rest is history. So since June of 2019, I've been with Navigate and um, originally my position was more just event planning and then kind of assisting our um, CFO at the time. And in October, so when I'd been there for just a few months, our CFO left for a new opportunity and it was decided that he, that position was not gonna be filled and we were just gonna hire an external um, accounting vendor. So we have an external CFO, an accountant, who's just a bookkeeper, basically. And then I was going to be in charge of that relationship. So over the course of the last almost two years, my, and with COVID too, my job has changed a lot. And mm -hmm. operations manager, you know, Navigate is basically three departments. We've got sales and marketing, we've got primary research, and we've got secondary research. And I would say I most closely fit into sales and marketing, but I'm kind of by myself in that I handle all the day-to-day -day financials. I do all of our HR. I am in charge of all of our external vendors like IT. Um, I also still do event planning, which there hasn't been a ton of this past year, but um, even just doing like a little outdoor gathering where us, us Chicago people you know, get together in the park um, to see each other client gifting and hospitality. So anything we can do to make our clients feel like, you know, they're part of our family and sending, you know, we heard someone was having a baby. So we sent them a whole care package of baby stuff. Um, so yeah, operations manager is kind of just all encompassing of being the person behind the scenes, making things happen. Um, and the, because of the whole financial piece, it makes me extra glad that I got that master's at yeah. Um, UND because I feel like I would not know what I was doing at all. I've already had to learn a lot to, you know, be proficient in this position. Um, but had I not had that background, I, I would not have been prepared for our CFO leaving and having to manage that um, transition. So um, it really kind of has come full circle for me. Um, 
and yeah, that's, I, I love working at Navigate. There's only 13 full-time employees. So we're a small group. We've got people in Scottsdale, Arizona, Iowa, a bunch in Chicago, someone in Michigan, someone in Wisconsin, and someone in Canada. So wow. um, even though we're all spread out, <coughs> excuse me, um, I feel like we're all really close. I, I know them all very well. We have a lot of fun. Um, in the past, we would obviously do retreats where we'd all be together in the one city, in one city for a long weekend, um, sometimes for a week. We haven't had been able to do that in a while, but we're planning something right now, hopefully for the end of 2021, um, once we're all able to be vaccinated and travel again. So looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. um, well, I love that you talked about going back for your master's to get some of that business, um, that business experience and kind of that business knowledge. Um, it's something that I tell potential students and, and I try to impart on our students that we have now because at Try and our sport management program is in the business school. So I was in the exact same situation as you were. So I went to Indiana University for my undergrad in sports marketing and management. And it was through the school of PE. So when I came out of college, I could run the best basketball camp in the world. <laughs> But if you asked me to actually do the accounting and reconcile everything, I was, I was lost. Um, Same. So, <laughs> I mean, we had a kind of a similar background that way, but the fact that you've done all these events um, and you picked a route working in sport where you had no life um, on the event side, um, yeah. but now it's kind of uniquely positioned you here at Navigate, even though maybe like your day to day, you're not at games and doing things like that, you know, you wear a lot of hats and you've got a lot of things going on. So, you know, navigate as a company for our students that don't know a lot about it. Like, what do you guys do? Cause looking at your website, it's real, it kind of is really fascinating to me. And I mean, the fact you guys work with the Cubs too, that was a big deal with me, but regardless yeah. of that, um, like, what do you guys do at navigate? Yeah. So um, we have been, navigate is 15 years old this June and um, it, is, it was founded as a sports data and analytics company. So um, being hired by different properties, brands, teams, um, conferences, basically anyone tied to the sports world in order to provide the best possible um, data and research for anything like an evaluation of a stadium, um, partnership searching, sponsorship searching, um, Anything you can think of where in marketing or sales or just any way that you can um, boost revenue, um, Navigate can do it. So um, it was founded with that aspect of like, we offer the absolute best sports data analytics you can find out there. And I would say over the past, you know, six, five to six years, it's transitioned um, while keeping that same foundation of the best possible you know, data that you can find into more of a consultancy. So um, our like tagline is trusted advisors in sports and entertainment. Um, and what that means is it's, you're not just getting like a 500 page report with a bunch of graphs and all this data that you don't know what it means. Um, you're getting that data, but you're getting it explained to you in a conversation and you know recommendations on how to use it and the best ways to um, accelerate based on whatever the project may be. And Navigate has worked like with the Cubs, like you said, lots of different um, sports entities. Uh, I think we've worked with four of the Power Five conferences. Um, Cubs are one of the one of the clients right now. We work with Orlando Magic, Milwaukee Bucks. Um, obviously working on some that I can't talk about right now yet. Um, but I, I was really, really pleasantly surprised with how well utilized Navigate's research has been during COVID. Um, we thought this would be a big year of a downtick for us, but in fact, um, very luckily for us, this is not the case with everyone in sports, but you know, we had a fantastic year because people needed it more than ever. You know, they, they prioritize that budget to hire Navigate to, you know, be able to do what they could with, go, with COVID going on. Um, so yeah, I'm, right now we are also more of a 
Um, so we have, only have one salesperson right now, the CEO founder, AJ Maestas. Um, and other than that, you know, we're just really, really working on being an inbound um, marketing machine. So we post tons of content on LinkedIn, you know, videos, infographics. We have a podcast now, um, as well as a blog. And each Navigate person over the course of this year, by the end of this year, each, Navig each Navigate employee um, will have authored a blog. So Navigate's also really awesome about, you know, helping its employees grow and develop over the course of their time at Navigate and providing things like the blog, different projects, to, you know, to boost your own mes resume, to boost your own portfolio. Wow. So basically teams that are looking kind of on the business side for analytics, mm -hmm. hey, what are some ways we can uh, increase revenue? Mm -hmm. What are certain markets we pull from, things like that? They kind of contract with Navigate and Navigate kind of does all that heavy lifting on like the analytics side, which a lot of people, you know, that are in kind of C-suite positions there in sports just don't know. Um, yeah. So Navigate takes care of all that. And then their teams are able to use that information to basically make informed decisions. In a nutshell, am I, am I close? That's absolutely right. And Navigate is also not afraid to straight up suggest like, here's our data, here's what you should do. Okay. Um, and so that's where that consultancy piece comes in. Um, another super popular topic right now is Gen Z. So mm -hmm. a lot of you guys in college, you are right there um, doing a lot of research and data on, you know, how your generation is consuming sports and entertainment and what those teams can do, you know, to maximize engagement. Because as you know, as we know, you guys are consuming sports and entertainment way different than your parents did. And a lot of teams are really behind on that. So, um, and properties and brands, everyone's behind. So everyone's trying to, you know, get as much info in that realm as possible to, you know, cater to this new generation of people that are going to be, you know, be the, be the new group spending money on sports entertainment. And, and I wanted to open up to my, my students here, cause I know they'll have questions for you, but I did kind of want to ask, like, you've been there for a couple of years now. Um, is there kind of a piece of data or something that's come out that you've seen or like, oh my gosh, that's, that's amazing. I never thought like sports are shifting this way or people consume sport this way or anything that just kind of caught your eye. Um, I think the biggest one for me, and this might not be the case for everyone, but personally, I have never been super tuned into the soccer world. Mm -hmm. So um, MLS and specifically the Chicago Fire are, um, you know, clients we've worked with and continue to work with. And we have some huge soccer junkies on the team. So the way that soccer is viewed around the world is kind of mind blowing to me. I, I like had no idea. I mean, I knew soccer was huge um, in other countries um, and that it was the most popular sport, but just the level of viewership and worldwide fans that some of those clubs have and how it's growing in the US, um, you know, I just, I didn't grow up around soccer. I've, I've never been a fan of one of those international soccer teams, um, but it's just really cool to me to learn about a whole new, for me, new sport and league and just, you know, how, how insanely huge their reach is. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's not even something that I was previously aware of. So that's been a really cool thing for me to learn about. Um, at Navigate since it's not something I was exposed to before. All right, very cool. <laughs> this will be my last question. I'll open it up to you guys, I promise. I'll stop talking. Um, if somebody, if like a student was interested in kind of um, getting into like the, the consulting side, I, I'm just looking at your roster. You can't see my screen. I don't know why I keep looking away. Um, but if somebody was interested in kind of working on the consulting side, like some of the people that you're doing at Navigate or kind of working on some of that data side, is there a career path or education path that they might want to pursue? I would say, so a lot of my coworkers either majored in business or something in sports. Okay. So wow. that type of major, um, I think is just evolving in general to cater to the research and technical side. It's not something that I saw, you know, however many years ago that was um, that I got to college, but um, just staying involved in 
that world, you know, connecting on LinkedIn with companies like Navigate that post a ton of content regarding that stuff. Um, and then any internships, even if it's not necessarily research related, where you can be involved on specific projects and show in an interview or on your resume or in any sort of application, I did this project, this is mine, and be an absolute subject matter expert on that thing, just to show that you have, you know, the capacity and the mindset and the drive to complete something like that. Because a lot of the types of projects that, you know, navigators are doing, they're like, I never did this before I worked here. And it's true, but just, I guess, having that project mindset and then being able to then not only be an absolute expert, but present on it um, once it's complete is something that's going to set you apart from others who, you know, don't have an experience or, you know, something on their portfolio like that. Wow, that's, that's kind of amazing. I was expecting you to say, yeah, you need to have a background in finance or accounting or, you know, auditing or something like that. But, you know, there's so many opportunities for you guys now that, you know, back when I went to school 100 years ago that we didn't have to, <laughs> you know, for things like blogging or podcast or just kind of marketing yourself on LinkedIn. So take advantage mm -hmm. of it. Um, mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to open it up to you guys. What questions do, do you have for Tess? Yeah, I got one. Um, do you guys, I guess I'm a little confused. Do you guys like reach out to people or do those groups and teams come to you? So both. Um, in the past, it's been very much an outbound sales um, strategy. So when I say that, that outbound, that means our salespeople getting on the phone, sending emails, getting on a plane and going to see people in person and meeting with potential clients and trying to get them to, you know, see what Navigate can do and then have them hire us. Um, like I said, when I started at Navigate, um, there were actually 21 employees and now we've kind of shaved it down to only 13. Um, some of that purposeful, some of that because for other people leaving on their own. Um, and right now we just have one salesperson. So our sales and marketing strategies have completely shifted and become a lot more um, strategic and um, I guess have a lot more depth to now because now our goal is to be an inbound sales marketing machine, which means we are posting tons of content on LinkedIn and reaching out to people there. Um, we're driving people to our website. We are um, on Twitter, also driving people to the website and to LinkedIn. And that's another area where we also do, you know, collect data and research on ourselves is like, okay, we have had a huge spike in engagement since we started the podcast. So yeah, we're going to keep doing this podcast. We're going to start, we're going to keep getting as many people to be on the podcast as we can and, um, you know, see where that takes us. Um, so yeah, I guess we've kind of done both. Um, we still do have that outbound aspect. AJ is still very busy all the time reaching out to people. Um, but he's just one person. So that's why we also have, you know, had to flex that muscle of getting that, those inbound leads and inbound um, engagement. Does that answer your question? It does, thank you. And then you said it shrunk from 21 to 13. Do you expect it to grow at all or do you guys want it to grow at all? <clears throat> so it depends. Um, I think, so like I said, AJ's our CEO. He's also the founder. He started Navigate 15 years ago. I think the most employees there ever were was 26. Um, and then I think 13 right now is about the smallest that we've been. Um, it, 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 I don't think there is, um, I don't, he doesn't, definitely doesn't have a desire to have it grow much past 20 again. Um, he kind of likes that sweet spot of like 10 to 20 employees. Um, we're all very close, like I said. Um, and it just works as far as our culture. Um, but the needs kind of fluctuate based on, you know, what's going on in the world. Um, one of the sectors that was for employees was um, we had a team called Strategic Partnerships, and they were trying to be hired by teams and brands to go out and then, you know, get their partnerships. Um, for a number of reasons, it didn't really work out, and that department just was eliminated at the end of last year because it wasn't working out. They, it had been about two years. They hadn't won any work. Um, 
except for one project, which the XFL was what it was. And unfortunately the XFL ended um, during COVID and wasn't being a great client anyway. So it just didn't work out. Um, but I could see in the future us needing more employees. Um, my job currently is already becoming one that could probably split into two at some point, um, just depending on you know the growth that we have as far as clients, um, how many current clients we have and retainer clients. So um, it's kind of a tough question to answer, but basically our needs fluctuate on the industry needs. So we could be back up to 20 at some point, we could stay at 13 for a while. Um, we also usually have about four to six active interns, which is also really helpful for the research and sales and marketing teams because those, you know, that work is really, really helpful and valuable for us um, as well as providing value to interns who are students. I can ask another one. Um, do you guys have like, do you guys work with like minor league teams at all or is it all usually pretty big brand name teams? We have worked with smaller teams. Um, before I started, and I don't know all the details of this project because it was just finishing up as I started. Um, if you want to know more, I can find out. We did have a really big deal with the NBA G League. Um, and I think that that was about a year long relationship. Um, since I've started, we have worked with um, two minor league baseball teams and a smaller conference as well. I'm trying to remember which one. The MAC conference, the Metro Athletic, Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. So that's a smaller conference that we've worked with before. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, some smaller brands too, you know, just companies that um, want the data and research that we can provide and want to break into relationships with sports entities and brands. Um, so yeah, it's not all big. Um, as we transition more to a consultancy, unfortunately, we do have to, you know, prioritize clients with a bigger budget, but that's not to say that there aren't, you know, smaller one-off projects um, for repeat customers or smaller retainer opportunities um, where, you know, most of the time we're seeking those six or seven figure relationships, um, but we still have, you know, some smaller ones as well. Drew, Nikki, anything, any questions you guys have or? No, I don't have anything. All right. I guess I got one more. It's kind of steering away from Navigate. Um, when you were in college, like you said, you're from Illinois. How did you get those jobs with like the Rangers and out in Colorado? Did you just, you just applied or did you know somebody? Yeah. So that's a really good question. And um, I, I think you guys have heard me say about six times so far that I'm still good friends with mm -hmm. people at so-and-so. Um so every, my very first job at the Texas Rangers, um, I'm very fortunate to be um, really good family friends with um, Rick George, who was the COO at the Rangers at the time. Um, and I had to do an interview for one of my freshman classes with someone who I was interested in their position. So of course I said, mom, can I have Rick's number? I'm gonna call him and interview him for this. And he said, you know, we have summer internships. So if you wanna come down, and live with us for the summer and do an internship at the Rangers, let me know. So I did have to apply an interview and everything, um, but that's definitely how um, that opportunity was presented to me. Um, and then when I was applying for the job at the athletic department at Illinois, I was really, really lucky because on my um, resume, I had, you know, I, my address or something, it said my hometown. And my boss at the athletic department, his mom was from my hometown. So that's why he got, called me in for an interview, like, hey, you, you're from Geneseo, you know, something like that. Um, at Colorado, by the time I got out of college, 
Rick had left the Rangers and he was now the athletic director at Colorado. He's still the athletic director there. Um, so he introduced me when I was, um, when it was about October, there were no jobs open yet, but he connected me to um, the director of facilities there. Um, so I had a couple co phone calls with him. This was before Zoom was like such a normal thing. So um, email exchanges, um, a couple phone calls. I was out in Colorado for a ski trip oops, um, that winter and I um, went and met with him. And, you know, he was like, we don't have anything right now, but, you know, uh, I'll keep looking at the website. Luckily for me in May, a position did open up and I was able to apply and I reached out to Jason and said, hey, I saw this position. Um, I just applied for it. Super excited at the, you know, potential to work for Colorado. Um, and then I got the job. When I was applying to the master's program at UND, um, my now husband, then boyfriend, already lived in Indianapolis. So I was visiting him in, I want to say August or so, um, like a full year before my classes would have started. And I looked at the program. I looked at the program director, found his email, emailed him and asked him if he could meet me for coffee because I was going to be in town and I had questions about the program. So that was before I even applied. Um, but I met with him. Um, you know, I wanted to stand out. I wanted him to know my name and know my face. Um, and then when the, when the application came up, uh, same thing, I gave him a call, um, told him that I was applying and that I was really excited. Um, and then a few months later I got in. Um, when I moved to Indianapolis, I didn't have a job yet, but um, I saw that um, Todd Taylor, who was the chief marketing officer at the Pacers, used to work at the Rangers. And so I reached out to my boss at the Rangers, um, whose name was Donnie Portash, and because him and Rick didn't overlap. Um, but I reached out to Donnie and I said, do you know Todd Taylor? He said, yes, connected me to Todd Taylor. Um, so I met with Todd uh, right when I moved to Indy, met him for coffee twice. The first time, just like at a Starbucks or something. The second time he invited me to, um, the to Bankers Life Fieldhouse. Um, again, no jobs open yet, but just kind of, you know, cultivating that relationship, making friends with people. He introduced me to a couple people um, that day when I was at Bankers Life. Um, and then sure enough, uh, a couple months later, a job came up. Um, I applied for it. I reached out to Todd. I reached out to um, Barry, who he'd introduced me to um, and said I was really excited to be applying, got the job. Um, and then, like I said, with um, Navigate, I was just talking to my friend who I knew worked in the sports industry and said, if you hear anything, you know, I'm probably going to be moving to Chicago in the next six months or less. And he said, yay, let's keep, let's keep in touch because you'd be a great fit at Navigate. Again, no job open yet. Um, but yeah, just kind of, it's a very like intricate web that the sports world is. And if you you know, it doesn't matter if it's a CEO or just the person who sits at the next desk next to you, um, staying in touch with people and forming meaningful relationships. And, you know, b before there's even a possibility of, you know, one of you helping the other, um, it's just so important. Um, if any of my friends came to me and said, hey, I'm moving to Chicago, do you know of anything, you know, I would, you know, that I would, that would be like a springboard. I would ask all my coworkers. I would, you know, talk to all my friends and say like, yeah, let's, let's, you know, let's find something for you, whether it's now or a few months from now. Um, so definitely I've been extremely fortunate to have um, some lifelong relationships that have led to me to where I am today. Um, in addition to that, just so important to, you know, be friendly, be open, um, to those relationships and then be super proactive. You know, I, no one told me, hey, you need to go find the name of the director of the sports management program and get a hold of him. I just did that because I, I wanted to stand out and I didn't want there to be any, um, any chance of not getting that opportunity to get into the program. There you go, guy. Make connections, use your connections, but mm -hmm. in a good way. I think, I think what Tess, I, I, 
like what she was saying, where she cultivated those relationships. It wasn't necessarily going out to coffee to say, hey, I need a job. Do you have a job? You know, mm -hmm. just, um, make those relationships. And, you know, they, they know her, they trust her. And then, you know, away, away she goes. So mm -hmm. um, that's another thing. People, people really, really trust recommendations mm -hmm. from friends and from colleagues that they trust. Um, so if you're seeking a recommendation from someone, um, and they do it, that's awesome. You know, write them a thank you note, uh, meet up with them again after and say, thank you, you know, stay friends with them. Um, and also, you know, you are now a representation of them to, you know, when Donnie put me in contact with Todd, I was going to do everything I could to be the best representation of myself, but also Donnie, I wouldn't want Todd to come back to him at some point and say, Tess is a real dud. I don't know what you were thinking, you know, or whatever. Um, so yeah, just always, you know, put your best foot forward, always be truthful. Um, it's always so much better to like own up to a mistake or say, I don't know um, if that's the answer, then, you know, just, just try to speak and about something you're not really sure about um, and then have to backtrack. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's such great advice. And, and Tess, I'm really, I've, we've taken a lot of your time, but really appreciate you being on here. This was, um, this was real good. And we recorded this, so we'll be able to play it back for our members who, who weren't here today. But, but again, thanks. Really appreciate the time. Yeah, happy to do it anytime. All right. I appreciate it. I'm going to talk with them for a few minutes coming up, but please feel free to, if you got to get running, go ahead. All right. Thanks again, Brandon. And it was really nice to meet all you guys. All right. Thank, thank you. Bye. All right, guys, let me bring up my my screen here for you real quick, just to go. And I mean, I know we don't have everybody on, but you can at least see we got the schedule coming up. Um, our next mini will be next Friday. And traditionally, you know, Andy, you've been here for a while. We usually like to try to do something the first day of the tournament. You know, we'll do like a call out meeting. Um, this one will be important because we're going to um, look for officer nominations. So for this upcoming year. Um, we're going to have to replace our president and vice president unless you're staying another year, Andy. No. Nope. All right. I didn't know if you just want to continue paying tuition here. Uh, yeah. I try. Um, so we got a president and vice president to replace. And then um, the directors of PR and membership. Um, I'll talk with you guys, Nikki and, and Alyssa, but um, those will go back up for nomination, but you can always re nominate yourself for that as well. Um, our next meeting after that, we'll get, um, we'll do on Zoom as well. Um, it will be with John Yeager from the Yeager Leadership Group. We'll get a Zoom link out to you guys. Um, we've got a few opportunities for you with Cincinnati Cyclones and the Indianapolis Colts. They're both doing like virtual sport business days. So if you're interested in that, here's the links for both. Um, it's a nominal fee. It's 10 bucks for the Cyclones, 25 bucks for the Colts. So we're interested in doing that. Um, we're not going to cover the cost of that from the sport management club just because we're not going to them. And there's not a, you know, we get a little bit more value when we can actually go and network. Um, but the fees are pretty, pretty low if you want to check those out and do some networking. And then on the 21st, and then we'll also do um, after the meeting on the 7th, we'll do our new officer voter voting as well. And then on the 21st, we're still looking for a speaker. So if there's anybody that you guys know that we want to bring in, please feel free to, uh, to contact me. Other than that, anything else for the good of the I year? have an announcement real quick. Yes. So um, Indy Sports Corp opened up their application for volunteers for March Madness. All you have to do is go to indianasportscorp.com. Uh, register as a volunteer, and then you can uh, become a volunteer. I signed up for a, sh a few shifts myself. Um, so if anybody else wanted to do shifts, I thought I would throw it out there. Yeah, that Indy Sports Corp, they're kind of like the place. They, they're the ones who bring all these big events to Indy. Just go to volunteer. Um, I actually volunteered with them when I was in college, and um, I, got to lot, I got to do a lot of cool things with them. Um, so great job, Nikki, for jumping on that. Um, I contacted, I think, Emily down there to see if we could bring a group. 
Um, but we weren't able to do it just because of COVID restrictions. But she did say if anybody was interested to um, register um, through here on Indy Sports Corp, what, take you five, 10 minutes or something, Nikki, to do that? Yeah, it was a really short process. All you have to do is fill out your basic information and then um, they'll send you a link to either register or you can go to their website to get the volunteer opportunities. Excellent. Um, and when you're there, you know, I'll tell this to Nikki, but, but to all of you, anytime you're doing an opportunity like this, network with everybody, just introduce yourself to people, try to get business cards and then follow up with them on LinkedIn, just saying, Hey, nice to meet you. Kind of what Tess was talking about. And if you get an opportunity, see if you make them, meet them for coffee, do a little informational interview, just start to cultivate that relationship. And, you know, people are going to go on to do some amazing stuff, just like you guys will. So, you know, one day, 10, 15 years down the line, I'm going to be able to pluck you and if we can finally get one of you working for the Cubs, that would be great. So I can get some free tickets and, that's why I'm here. I'm just waiting for one of you to get a job for the Cubs, quite frankly. <laughs> All right. Anything, uh, anything else for the, uh, for the good of the order? Do we have that uh, updated schedule? Uh, I did send it out. Yeah. Alyssa, I think just sent it out, but um, the one with the cyclones, I, I think I just put that on there today. So I'll send that out to Alyssa to send out to everybody too. Okay. That's all I have. All right, guys, we'll have a great rest of your week here day, and um, we'll see you on uh, the 19th. We'll see you next Friday. Thanks.